Welcome back everyone to part two of our series on non-base 10 systems. In part one, we covered the basics and we discussed base five. Now using what we learned about non-base 10 systems from the previous lesson, let's apply that to the other three, namely base eight, base 16, and binary. Then we'll answer questions based on what we learn. The base eight or octal system uses digits between zero and seven. We'll start by learning how to count in base eight. So since we can use digits from zero to seven, I'll start with one, two, all the way to seven. Then once you've reached seven and want to move on to eight, you can't simply write down eight as you normally would. Instead, you would introduce another place value, one zero sub eight. Remember that one zero sub eight is the same thing as saying one times eight to the power of one, plus zero times eight to the power of zero. Adding this up, we get eight. If we want to write down the number nine, we would write down one, one, sub eight, that's equal to nine. And the number 10 would increase the ones place value by one, where we would have one, two, sub eight. Eventually, you will reach one, seven, sub eight and that is equal to 15. Since we can't increase this even more to eight, we would then change this place value so that it becomes two followed by zero sub eight and that would be 16. Now, you will eventually run out of numbers within two place values. For example, after seven, seven sub eight, which is equal to 63, you would need to introduce a new place value, a third one, and to represent the number 64, we would have one zero zero sub eight. So that's the idea behind base eight. Let's discuss base 16. Now base 16, or the hexadecimal system, uses both digits and letters, and this is where it gets its name from, hexa meaning six letters following the digit nine. So if we were to count one all the way through F, that covers 15 numbers, one through 15. If we wanted to write down the number 16, we would introduce a new place value. So we would write down one, zero, and that is 16. Now, of course, you need to include the subscript 16. To represent 17, this would increase by one, where we would have one, one, sub 16. And once we've reached 1f sub 16, which is equal to, well, let's do the math, 1 times 16 raised to the power of 1 plus f, which is equal to 15, times 16 raised to the power of 0, we have 16 plus 15, and that's 31. So after 31, if we want to write down, let's say, 32, that would change to two and the process would reset. Eventually we would reach FF sub 16. And if you do the math, this is equal to 255. So naturally you would introduce a new place value after that, where we've maximized how much we can introduce in two place values. We would write down 100 sub 16 and that would equal to 256. Then this would change and so on. Now with the binary system, this one is interesting because we only have two digits to work with, zero and one. Of course, to write down one is easy. You simply write down one. To write the number two, since we can only use digits between zero and one, we'd introduce a new place value. So I would have one, zero, sub two. Expanding this is the same thing as saying one times two raised to the power of one plus zero times two raised to the power of zero. Multiplying and adding, we would end up with the number two. To write down the number three, we would have one, one sub two. The number four would be one, zero, zero sub two. Five would be one, zero, one sub two. Just follow the pattern, then comes one, one, zero, one, one, one. We are at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To represent the number eight, we have to introduce another digit. 
So we would write down 1, 0, 0, 0. That's 8. Then 9 is 1, 0, 0, 1. And 10 is 1, 0, 1, 0. These bits represent numbers between 1 and 10. OK, using what we just learned, let's discuss the answers to these two questions. Write the binary command, this, into octal notation. Octal notation is digits between 0 and 7. So the best way to do this is to break the binary command into bits of 3, just like this. Now we will convert each of these into decimal notation and from there interpret what the octal notation will be. So 1, 1, 0. Remember, this is like saying 1 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 0. That's 4. That is 2, and that is 0. So this is equal to 6. Remember, the octal notation goes between 0 and 7. So we don't need to change this into anything other than what it is. So that's 6, and we have to do this again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more times. If you do it properly, this is equal to 3, that's equal to 5, 1, 3, and 1. Notice that none of the conversions led to a number greater than 7, which is good for us because we don't have to then convert from decimal into octal using what we learned above. So the, what you see in purple is the answer in octal notation. In question number two, we have to convert the same binary command using hexadecimal notation. For this, it's nice to break it down into groups of four. We have four groups of four. We will convert 1110 into decimal, and then from there, change what we have to change. So 1110. 1 times 2 to the power of 3 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 0, essentially. This adds up to 14. Now remember, 14 is the letter E. So this is E. You have to do this again for these three groups. I'll do this one for you, these two. This one is 3 and 5. So, so far, our number is 3, 5, E. If we convert that into decimal notation, you will end up with 11. 11, if we look at this legend here, that's 10, that's 11. So it's B. We have B35E as the number in hexadecimal notation. So there you have it. The completed lesson showing you everything you need to know about non-base 10 systems. If you have any questions, please Use the comment section below or use our website, studyforce.com, and we'll gladly assist you wherever you need. Talk to you later.